Sonic Mania. It's getting very, very high scores all around. Very, very critically acclaimed. Um, and now it has been released on the PC. However, it, as you can tell by the title of the video, it has DRM for some reason. And it cannot be played offline. At least at first. I believe that they have gone, they have since gone back and made it so that you can play um, offline. Uh, so it looks like. Although at first, um, <laughs> Sega posted a message on Steam uh, talking about the DRM because this is what really irritated people is that the DRM or lack of online or lack of offline play I should say um, was not found in the product details on the Steam page for Sonic Mania and this was Sega's initial response to it like you we've noticed an error in the Steam store not mentioning the DRM for Sonic Mania we're fixing that now Sonic Mania is intended to be played offline and we're investigating reports on that we're also investigating other issues like controller support. These are all PC-specific things that Christian Whitehead and the team have been working on these last few weeks. Please bear with us while we collate and investigate problems that are being brought to our attention. Um, and apparently the reasons that they gave on a Facebook post for DRM was to... Uh, or, I'm sorry, the... Inability to play offline was due to a bug and not DRM. So DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. And it is an anti-piracy thing that a lot of PC games have. Uh, as many people may remember, when the Xbox One launched, DRM was going to be built into pretty much every single game title... No title was going to be able to be played offline for more than a couple of hours before the system would try to go online and make sure that you weren't using a pirated version of the game. Uh, everyone got mad, not because everyone is a filthy pirate, but because that's just annoying and stupid. And at the time, Microsoft's response was, well, you know, if you don't want to have uh, DRM games, you can play the Xbox 360. Dumbest answer ever. So, DRM in 2017. Before I get into my take on it, what do you, what do you think of this situation and kind of DRM in general? I, mean, I think the Sega team handled it pretty nice, you know. They got to it kind of quick and they were like, we're fixing it now. We're going to get to it. Our bad. We didn't see this on there. Yeah. So, I think they handled that pretty nice. I do think it was a big misstep to not even... Because their DRM is a big deal for some people. Uh, I, I know on, on it's not as restrictive as, like, say, the Xbox One was going to be with two hours of offline play only. And then it would just stop you from playing. Um, so, it's not as bad as that. However, I do think that since DRM is there to stop people from pirating the game, people get around it all the time. It literally doesn't do what people, what publishers want it to do, which is to stop people from illegally distributing their games digitally. It slows them down, maybe by a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, but it always gets broken and the game gets distributed and that's it. So what's the point? Is it to maybe protect those initial sales? I can maybe see that just because a game always sells the best on launch day and kind of the, you know, maybe first few weeks, first month that it's out. That could be it. So even if they do let's say takes them two weeks to get rid of the DRM. You still have two weeks of people only being able to get your game through steam. 
So there is that, but I don't know. At the same time, I feel like people who really want to play the game for free will wait out those two weeks instead of buying it. So I don't really think that, honestly, I, I don't, and I'm not, I am not for game piracy. Um, I'm, I, I think it's, I think you should support, especially games that you like, you should support games that you like. You should buy games that you like. Um, when you don't do that, you're, what you're doing is, number one, you're making, you're stealing. I mean, you're making sure that developers don't get money for this. And when a publisher doesn't get money for a particular property, they're less inclined to keep making games for that property because it didn't sell well. And if everyone pirated the game, you could see a lot less of that game in the future. Or, you know, much less games for that property, I should say. Uh, but that being said, it's it's kind of it's kind of pointless. It always seems to be a high profile game that gets messed up by DRM and the lack of offline play. Because this is Sonic Mania specifically. It's not a demanding game. I'm sure your computer would run it just fine. My computer would probably run it just fine. Um, it's built on an engine which was basically designed to run on Android and iOS machines. So anything that can run Windows 7 and up is going to run it with no issues at all. Um, so I imagine a lot of people probably downloaded this on their laptops. Which, guess what? Laptops are not always online. When you, when you, when you're bringing it to, you know, it would be kind of awkward for people to be playing a laptop during a commute, like on a train or a bus. But I'm sure people do it if they have a long commute, maybe. I think one of uh, maybe last year, my first year, I um, I played a Pokemon game. While driving back to Cookville. On my laptop. Wait, while driving? No, no. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, my buddy was driving. Okay. Yeah, that's true. You weren't playing online, though, right? It was like a... No, no. It was a fan it was game? A... Yeah. You could just leave it at that. It was a fan game. <laughs> no, it really was a fan game. So... Yeah, I I think DRM always seems to just bring hatred with it. It doesn't it doesn't help your game developers. I don't know why you keep using it. I, someone has probably convi has convinced you that it's a good idea, but in the end, it's it's really not. 